All right, folks, welcome back. Game seven of AlphaGo versus the world as we work our way through 60, count them, 60 games between, at the time, the latest version of AlphaGo first upon the world early, uh, late 2016, early 2017. Uh, and we're just going right through them with our uh, special series, brief series, as uh, Michael delves into the main points. Uh, we're still working through uh, a bunch of Chinese players. Who's our who's our yes. player today? Well, the Chinese players were the quicker on the quickest to to catch on, I suppose. Maybe they mm -hmm. had some information. Uh, this is Chao Jiqian. Chao Jiqian was a four don professional. Um, I think he promoted to five don after that. Um, and he was born in 1996, so he's about 20 years old at the time of this game. And he, he was actually the winner of the World Amateur School Championship. Uh, that, oh. that was in 2012. And so that was before he promoted to professional ranking. So he was uh, a player who liked, to, liked territory. That was a very typical style at the time, um, taking grabbing territory and handling the weak groups and stuff like that. So you can, you're actually going to see that in this game. Oh, exciting. So I'll be handling weak groups against AlphaGo. I can't that, wait. Yeah. This is going to be that idea. Fun. <laughs> all okay. right let's take let's take a look at it okay so here's the game the human player has the white stones in this game so uh, AlphaGo has black you might recognize the pattern it's playing a star point and the large knight's enclosure a very this is sort of like in this version of AlphaGo this is AlphaGo's favorite style and white plays a Kakari and then extends towards the side so like I have been saying in similar positions in this series of games, again, this was the most popular opening. It was the way that we played it at the time. And it was the most successful opening for white. Um, actually playing the Kakari here was a slight innovation when before that most players had just played the, the Wariuchi to start with. Playing this once and then playing the extension was supposed to be the modern way to do it. But uh, as far as AlphaGo is concerned, this is already bad for white. And again, you're gonna see me suggesting this move. Um, actually, if black plays here, this is gonna be a very popular Joseki. If black plays here, then it's completely different variation where white is probably gonna play a Shimari in the lower left corner and be looking to play this move later on in the game, maybe next chance. So this is sort of um, the pr priority of that upper right corner is being reduced a little bit because there's this issue in the lower right corner, which is about the same value. And so white mm -hmm. is free to play that Shimari. So that corner enclosure in the lower left area is also a very important move that computer programs are looking for a chance to play it, you might say. But playing here, this the extension is nowadays, it's considered a slack move. It's, it's um, people just don't play it anymore. And black plays a Kirkari. So at this point already, you're gonna see black is uh, well over 50%. And then when uh, white plays this pincer, again, this was the way they played it back then. That's the way we played it, top pros, um, all the pros. But of course, uh, anyone who studies with computer programs now knows that white is probably would do better to play uh, something, some a Kosumi or a nice move from the cornerstone. Put black played here, uh, and white, and Black played the large knight's move. We've seen this before in this series of games. And I'm going to say again that White should play the attachment here, after which Black can uh, hunt it and get into this variation. And White gets this little uh, peep here, which is a nice move. Or otherwise, if uh, Black plays the wedge, then it's going to get into a fight, which is supposed to be OK. Uh, this has been around for hundreds of years, actually, this mm -hmm. Joseki. It was um, several hundreds years of years at least. And this is still valid for white. It's still a way that white could have played. In the game, white played this move. Um, and it's bad. Um, as far as AIs are concerned, it's just bad. But it's forgivable right. because this was supposed to be the way we would play it at the time. This is, this is <laughs> the most popular variation. And people were playing it with uh, fairly good success at the time. It was a fairly successful move. Uh, among us humans. The problem is that when white crawls here, uh, when people used to extend here and allow white to play, for instance, something like this, or maybe something like this on the, on the, in the upper left area to consolidate that left side, this would be perfectly okay for white. 
But AlphaGo is not doing that. AlphaGo takes this chance to jump into the side and playing a honey here is actually, it's not such a serious move. I, I have to ask a question. Play the honey. It's supposed to be a great shape. It's supposed to be good shape for white to play this. But now, uh, black just extends on the side. And I think I mentioned this in another video, but it's very, very difficult for the human players to find, as white, to find a good way to attack this black group here. And part of it is the fact that at any point, black can just uh, slide into the corner and make a living shape with this kind of extent, this kind of um, sequence here towards the corner. It's very easy for black to make a living shape there. So it's very difficult for white to actually get a significant attack on black. White, so black getting this extension is really important. And let me let me just so check in and ask you. On the left side. Yes. Well, you had mentioned when this came up a couple of games ago uh, couple that couple we were, games yeah, ago. It's yeah, gonna and, come and, up again, you know, this is this well, was a favorite opening for us. So the humans are happy to play this position, this um, this sequence that was successful, and they're used to it. They well, that's my question, actually, is that it's, you know, we've, we've already seen it playing uh, once in this series and it, it didn't work out. Is this simply that, you know, as pros, you're taught that this is good or is it perhaps uh, a bit of stubbornness that, that you, know, uh, you know, I'm going to play this and I'm going to show them, you know, uh, where, where the other person went wrong. I mean, and, and yeah, I just may just... You're right on the dot there, I think. Um, there is a little bit of stubbornness there, and there is the feeling that um, the mistake was not made yet. And there's, I see. And the player before may, must have made a mistake later in the I game. See. And the player who's playing as white here, the human player, has an idea about okay. where that mistake was. So he, white in this position is thinking that he's still all right, but he doesn't realize that the mistake has been made already. He, he thinks it's the future, and he probably thinks he knows where it was made. Later. I got gotcha. That's fair. That's fair. I get it. And so it's not that they've the players have ignored the results that were coming in, but they um, they have their own ideas about how to handle that. But actually, um, objectively, this is just bad for white. Um, and black is already starting to attack white on the left side. And the idea for most humans at this point was would be to, to live on the left side and maybe white has a lead in territory, but that just doesn't work with AlphaGo. It's very strange um, that white can just live on the left side, and when it's all over, black's going to have an advantage. So that's the strength <laughs> of AlphaGo, just controlling the overall position. In the game, white extended here, so you can see white's grabbing as much territory as possible. It might have been better for white to play away and add a stone to that group on the, on the left side. That, that would have been the more reasonable way to play, it would have been closer, closer to an even game. Uh, like I, I still think that black is probably close to seventy percent winning percentage if we ask an AI. But this, the board position is sufficiently complicated that it would not be a big deal in a human human professional game at least. Uh -huh. um, white extends here, taking some more territory, and black gets to enclose the white group. At this point. Um, and closing white here, um, this actually reduces white's ice space. So white had to add that stone there. White had to play this move first, which is threatening to break out. And when black covers in the center, now white should play here. So in the game, white played here immediately. White actually had to play this exchange, which would make a big difference in white's eye space because white has, mm -hmm. white has these forcing moves here, two forcing moves here, which make an extra eye there. So this, this little eye that white has here makes this whole white group a very safe position. It makes the group safe. And there's also the fact that white will have potential to, to break out um, with moves like this or moves like this. There's some weakness in black's position too. So if white had played this way, it, it's probably good for black, but it would still be a difficult game for black to finish off. Like this would happen and white would still have these forcing moves to make two eyes. So the group on the left would be fairly solid. Whereas in the game, when black plays this move, black not only gets this already looking sort of like a territory, right, in, in this area, uh -huh. not only does that influence there, black has a very solid position with no weak points. And the fact that black has played this, this is taking away 
that white eye that white had in this area. There, there was that, that marked area where white had a potential eye. When that eye is gone, white actually has to add another move to this, this group wow. to be able to live. So white had to play like this. And black got into the 3-3 three, three point. And this is going to have the effect of erasing all of the weakness that black has with moves like, um, with points like this, this or this. White is looking at weaknesses there, all these weaknesses in black's wall. By diving into the 3-3 three, three point, all of that is going to be nullified because black is going to have a living position there and is just running away with the game. So at this point, black is already like um, 76 to 80% winning by more than 10 points on the, before Komi. Good so, Lord. So, of course, a human, if I was playing, I would, I would still, I wouldn't know I was winning, but I'll play. <laughs> again, once again, just, just so simply, and this is why the, you know, this series of games was, was just so exciting. I mean, first of all, just in the number of games that we suddenly had available to us, um, but also the ability to, to look at all these different kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, and, and see all these different styles. So very exciting, very fun games. And again, uh, we are going to be doing these, these shorter uh, videos for the entire 60 game series. And then uh, in the volume two of our AlphaGo to Zero series, uh, we'll have uh, a bit more of the commentary uh, on the game. So something for everybody to look forward to. Yeah. Thank you. Just looking at Thanks. this game, a final comment. I'm sure. always struck about how it seems so effortless when AlphaGo does yes. it. And yes, yes. And playing all these simple shapes. And at this point already, you can see that white has all these tiny little territories. And black has such a, a, a nice position all over the place. And it's like, how did that happen? Black wasn't really doing anything that seemed to be very strenuous, but it, it happened very naturally. It's, uh, th these are a particularly beautiful series of games, I think, and, and uh, I'm really glad that we're getting a chance to look at them. I uh, hope you're all enjoying them as well, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.